When it comes to modern politics in America, a great many people seem to think that the system is broken. Some might even say that it's a symptom of the decay of American society, while others might claim that government is in fact the cause of that decay. Still others might claim that American society is evolving into something better, and that it's the people who are fighting against that evolution which are causing the problems with the system. I have my own opinions, of course, and they are roasted opinions. Some would say that America was formed when the government was established through the signing of the Constitution, or even the Articles of Confederation. I believe that it was the other way around, though. The country came first from the general agreement by the people that they were part of a common culture, and because of this they fought to obtain their independence from other countries, specifically Great Britain, and worked for even longer to set up a government bound by the rule of law. The country is not the government, but in fact the people who then consent to be governed. What this means is that the American theory of government, the center of gravity for power within the system, is the people, not the president, not Congress, and not the Supreme Courts. Now the framers of the Constitution did not want every issue to be decided by the people because that system would be highly inefficient and provide no effective protections for the rights of minority groups against the tyranny of the majority. They did agree, however, that the ultimate oversight of the actions of the government must remain with the people. These two principles are the reason why our government is neither a pure democracy nor a pure republic, but instead is a democratic republic. The people elect representatives who take care of the nuts and bolts of government at all levels. Very few positions are not directly elected, and appointed positions are subject to extensive approval processes. Ultimately, though, the true oversight of government is conducted at the ballot box. The Congress was designated by the Constitution to create laws. Those laws are the rules by which Americans are to live. They are supposed to maximize opportunities for happiness through self-improvement, not drag down those who enjoy great success or block those who do not. They are supposed to prevent those who would succeed at the expense of others from doing this, and maintain a cooperative society in which Americans agree upon and are guided by a general code of conduct which allows them a chance to increase their own happiness so long as they don't hurt others in the process. The president was designated to be the chief representative of the country to other nations, and the person responsible for implementing and enforcing the laws which Congress passes. The president is not supposed to govern by decree, but has the authority to make decisions in order to best implement the law. Therefore, the president signs the bills sent to the Oval Office as an agreement to enforce the new law, because every new law is a change to the contract between the government and the people. The Supreme Court was designated to arbitrate over violations of law. In point of fact, this is the sole purpose of the judicial branch. Judicial review arose from the need to arbitrate between two or more laws which are in conflict, and there is a distinct hierarchy of laws. Congress cannot make federal laws which violate constitutional law. The president cannot issue executive orders which violate federal law. The departments of the executive branch cannot institute regulations which violate executive orders, and so on down to local ordinances on parking and the like. All of this government is designed to make sure that every American has the same opportunities to the greatest extent possible. Does it really work that way? Um, no. Just no. And it's not going to work that way, no matter what the government does. While the American system can work to eliminate unjust discrimination, it cannot remove the people's ability to see what is happening and judge for themselves. The Constitution protects the rights of the people individually and collectively from the government. But for what purpose, really? I believe that it's to allow people to make mistakes and to remove the ability of the government to act on a whim to make a perfectly legal decision into an illegal act 
without justification based upon the harm that it does to others. Choices, right or wrong, belong to the individual. The consequences of those decisions also belong to the individual, and the purpose of the law is to restrict only the choices which cause harm to others. Now, harm is a concept which is currently a bit nebulous. Actions which deliberately or negligently cause physical harm to others are against the law. Deliberately or negligently stealing money or the chance to obtain is against the law. Psychological harm is more difficult to understand and codify against, though. While deliberate psychological harm is pretty straightforward in many cases, negligent psychological harm is not. At what point can the government determine that an individual's personal choices are causing too much psychological harm to others? It's not an easy question to answer. All three of these forms of harm become very difficult to define when drawing the line between negligence and accidents as well, because the government must determine at which point a reasonable person would know that their actions could cause harm to others. And all of this is to maximize happiness, remember? Some believe that maximized happiness is supposed to be individual, with all sources of individual unhappiness removed from society. Others, and I personally tend towards this side, believe that maximized happiness must be determined based upon the society overall. You see, nothing can remove unhappiness entirely because not every source of unhappiness can be removed. Humans are not perfect. Mistakes will be made. Unhappiness will result from those mistakes. Not one individual in America has a guaranteed protection from unhappiness. Even newborn babies cry, although it's far easier to resolve the unhappiness of a newborn than an adult. People also don't start their lives at the same point. Some are born into families with more money and some into families with less. Some are born into families which have been in America for hundreds if not thousands of years and some are born into families who just arrived. Americans have different faces, come from different places, have different backgrounds and different resources, but we all have the same basic opportunities. The strife within the country comes from Americans attempting to impose their way of living as the best way of living upon other Americans. And yes, that comes from both the fairly typical people who fall close to the center of what is socially normal and those who hover around the fringes. The normies in the middle are reacting more strongly to the fringes, and the fringes are getting louder with their demands that they must be accepted no matter what makes them different. The people in the middle need to understand that not everyone is going to look like them, sound like them, or value what they value, and that's not a bad thing. After all, those differences are what encourage society to learn and grow. The people who are different from societal norms need to understand how it looks to those normies when Antifa is attacking people and busting shop windows, or when minor attractive persons attempt to get the age of consent laws revoked because they argue they have the right to be attracted to children, or even when proposals like the Green New Deal require the imposition of high taxes on anyone who has a good job or money in the bank. Not every difference is that extreme. Most of them aren't. The people in the middle need to be a little more tolerant of those who are a little outside of normal, but the people who aren't normies need to distance themselves from those who are taking advantage of the divisive rhetoric to act in ways which society agreed was criminal, or advocate for massive, sweeping changes which will effectively reverse what is considered normal and what isn't. Weaponizing outrage to upend the system isn't healthy, and it isn't helping. It just spreads the outrage, as people who aren't upset about the original issue get upset by the actions of those who are. If everyone keeps getting more and more outraged, then the country will fall apart. American society will crumble, not from the decay of differences, but from the onslaught of outraged behavior and the demands, the constant demands, for government intervention, we need to dial it back a notch, folks. All of us. Don't you agree?